look now look at your story like you've been around the best of the best like like you said arguably morgan cox sam cook justin tucker the best special team field goal unit ever assembled you've got Easily. that yeah you have kicked in difficult conditions green bay you have kicked in the most difficult team or organized team activities probably ever in the NFL with the mind games, with the Augusta silence that you went through with the, you know, 80 guys that you competed with in, in, in combines. I mean, you have played in a bankrupt league that you went 14 of 14. Your journey is remarkable. Like what you have already overcome reminds me of like Lord of the Rings type stuff, man. <laughs> You are the yeah hunter. no it's <laughs> yeah no it's it's it really has it's been crazy you know it's been a really been a really long journey obviously hey everybody it's James it's the 18th of January in the new year of 2021 Elliot Fry's experience and his story is incredible so check out this podcast as he joins the Simple Kicking Show Lee hit the theme. <laughs> Welcome to Simple Kicking with your host, James Harrison. Elliot Fry, who's the current kicker for the Atlanta Falcons. That's one way to put it. He's on a futures contract, and he's one of the South Carolina greats to ever kick up there at williams Bryce Stadium. Is that what it's called? Oh, yeah. williams Bryce. So we've got a really special guest, and so I just really appreciate you joining. And Elliot Fry, welcome to the Special Teams Lounge on the Simple Kicking Show. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I uh, I appreciate it. Happy to be here. Tell everybody what your story really has been like and what obstacles you've had to overcome. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's really tough. You know, I think everybody kind of in the who's been kind of from college and near the NFL or even just in college kicking knows that it's you know getting to the NFL and kind of being one of the thirty-two is something really hard uh, to accomplish, no matter how good you are, no matter what, you know, it's really hard to, to get in and, and kind of stay there. Um, when I came out of South Carolina, I mean, I didn't have anything, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I thought I had a good career at South Carolina, um, but just didn't, you know, there was no interest from the NFL, you know, just none whatsoever. So um, I ended up quitting. Like I ended up completely stopped kicking. I was done. I was doing financial advising down in, uh, in Atlanta you know, and that was kind of just my job. Like I wasn't, you know, kicking was done. That was in the past. Um, and I get a call from coach Spurrier, um, you know, that fall saying, you know, we got this, you know, league coming up, we got the AAF and I want you to be our kicker. And I kind of was just straight up like, no, you know, I, I found a job. I'm, I'm doing well. Um, think I can make a career out of this, you know, and I don't want to, you know, jeopardize that to go play in some league. And, kind of found out more about the league and um, kind of realized I could, you know, I kind of got sold on it. You know, you can make pretty good money for three months and just with the job that I was doing, um, you could kind of take that three months off, go kick, you know, almost like a summer break, but make some money and then keep doing it. So that was kind of my plan and went in, had a, had a really good little uh, stint in the AAF and um, ended up getting called to the bears and kind of started the whole NFL dream of, of, I guess, a few, few years after college, but yeah, it's been tough. You know, you, uh, everybody's really good, you know, and, and at the end of the day, there's only one guy. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that goes into, you know, the decisions and stuff like that, that makes it really hard. You know, you've got to have, you've got to be lucky enough to kind of be on a team and competing where there's actually an opportunity versus, you know, other places where there's not, you know, like if, if, if I was signed with, um, you know, Kansas city last year, right. And Harrison Bucker, you know, he's, he's one of the best in the league and just signed a huge deal. You can go in there and compete, but you, you could miss, I mean, he could miss every single kick in preseason, whatever. And I could make everything. And you know, that you're not going to be the guy, you know, and, and, you know, Harrison's a, a one of, you know, he's one of the best, but, um, you just have to be lucky enough to be on one of those teams where they're willing to make a change. And then even then, you know, they're still going to have another guy who's, who's really good and you guys got to go and compete. So it's a, it's a tough world. 
Is it tough because of timing? Yeah. Timing is, you know, it's obviously like a cliche, but, um, timing is everything. You know, you look at a lot of guys who, um, right place, right time. And, and not to say that, you know, guys don't deserve it or anything. I, I just personally think there's probably like 40 or 50 kickers that are good enough to play in the NFL. And there's only 32 jobs and, um, there's no backup. So you're either one of the 32 or you are on the street. Um, which is, you know, again, it's, it's, a, it's just a tough thing to do, but you know, like I was just saying, you, you've got to be in a situation where there's an opening or, um, you know, you never want to wish someone gets hurt, but you know, that's, that's how you get in. That, that's how I got a game in this year. My first game was, you know, I wasn't sitting there on my couch hoping that, um, the guy went down, but that happened and I got the call, you know, and it's one of those things where that can sometimes be your way in. So it's, there's a lot of timing, a lot of stuff that goes into it. Luckily I had worked out for the Falcons two times last year. So they kind of knew me. I was on their short list. You know, again, if that's another team where they maybe had a backup kicker in their mind, if something happened, you know, it's, so it was all kind of a, a perfect situation here this year with it, with Atlanta. So the obstacles that you faced and what you've kind of talked about now is kind of similar to what maybe you faced during your recruiting journey coming out of high school and into, into college. Is there a similarity yeah. there? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, in college, the, the good thing about college is you can walk on, which is what I did. I was a preferred walk on. So you can, you can go to a big time school. And if you have the confidence that you can go and be the guy, you can just go. Right. And, and, you know, hopefully it works out, but you at least have the opportunity to go and compete and like you know again I, I felt like you know a lot of kickers that are really good in high school that realistically they could walk on to any school they wanted you could walk on to Alabama you could walk on to Florida obviously most guys are going to take a scholarship at you know somewhere else right but um, that's a cool opportunity I think you know I, I went in as a walk-on and had the opportunity to compete my first training camp and ended up winning the job where I really didn't have like I had one offer to punt at Louisiana tech and I just wasn't where I wanted to go. I wanted to kick. Um, the difference when you get in the NFL though, is, you know, something that a lot of people don't understand too. And I think the entire kicking community pretty much knows at this level is scouts and GMs, even special teams coaches in the NFL don't know a lot about kicking, you know, and if you were to really ask them, anything about it they don't know too much so they're really guessing you know they're going off you know what other coaches are saying and thinking about certain guys you know and that's why you know kickers who are drafted or kickers who come out of college and you know they have a lot more opportunities than someone who wasn't you know really highly touted coming out of college which is kind of what I ran into like I didn't have you know I thought I had a pretty good career at South Carolina but I didn't get a single call you know, like I didn't have any, I was like, well, I should at least get, you know, a training camp or something, but I mean, I didn't get anything. But, um, the other thing you run into in, in the NFL is that you have different people making different decisions. You have the front office and you have the coaches and they're not always on the same page and they're not always, um, making those decisions together or there can be kind of a disconnect there, which makes it, which makes it difficult in some places. I would say that makes it insanely difficult. <laughs> you, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you've got, you've got people, it's their job to evaluate talent, but from what I'm hearing, and it's not a secret, a lot of these people who are paid experts and paid professionals, the majority of them don't know what they're evaluating. They don't really understand mm -hmm. how to evaluate a kicker or a punter. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, and I always go back, you know, being with uh, Young Way Koo this year. I mean, you look at a guy like that who just had his first full season. And what did he, he's a pro bowler. His first full year, he's, he's went 34 or 37. That guy didn't have a job last year. He didn't even start the seat. Like he started the season, not even in a training camp. And he, you know, kind of went through the same thing where, you know, you're going to workout after workout and he finally got in and was able to prove it. But again, you look at 31 teams passed on that guy. He's, he's the best, you know, you could argue who's best, second best in the league this year, but 
I mean, he's, he's one of the best <laughs> this year. He, he probably had one of the best seasons that anybody's ever had. Um, you know, miss a couple of extra points. He would be considered the best. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like eight for eight over 50. I mean, you know, just being around him and watching him and, you know, we've, we've bonded, I think, cause we've had a similar experience where, you know, both went to the AAF, AAF, both have the same stats, both in the workout circuit. And just knowing that like, you just need kind of that one opportunity. And, um, you know, he got it last year and, and ran with it and you can see what happened this year. But I think that just goes to show, you know, he wasn't drafted, even though he was uh, a grows a finalist in college. For some reason, people didn't see him as, you know, whatever. He didn't get drafted. He did get into the Chargers. They cut him or whatever. But I mean, you, you look at guys like that who, how does, how does 32 teams originally like miss on a guy who is one of the most accurate in the NFL? Like, it's crazy. Here's a guy, like you said, who did not have a job a year ago. He yeah. is ten percent better than the NFL average. He out. Yeah. Wow. This is. Yeah. I didn't even. This is crazy. Not only is he more accurate than everybody. At this point, he was mm-hmm. 19 of 20. His precision is less than five degrees, which means yeah. that each one of his balls was really within the pro posts, which is about mm-hmm. you know, that, that nine foot width. And as you can see, kind of zoomed in, this guy makes 75% of his kicks down the pro posts and 25% of them outside of the pro post when the NFL average is 60% down the pro post. Yeah. And 24. I mean, that is insane how tight yeah. that grouping is. Yeah, no. And I mean, I, you know, I was, you know, it was, it was, it really was, you know, obviously as a competitor, I want to be out there starting, but it was cool to be around him this year and kind of just watch his, watch him go. You know, he, he was like, you, you know, we're saying, I mean, his season was awesome. And, and like it's showing here, he was right down the middle on everything. And it just goes kind of back to exactly what we're saying is like not, not one GM last year or in the last two, you know, he came out 2017. So 2018, 2019, he didn't have a job. Nobody would touch him, you know? And it's like, look at, and he was, you look at his like college stats. He was like 19 to 20 his senior year. I think, I mean, just, just a guy who is insanely accurate. And, and he doesn't have a job in the NFL for two years. Like, how does that, you know, make sense? And that's, that's what's frustrating as a, you know, I think for a lot of the guys who are kind of where I am or where young way was on that cusp where you're like, man, just give me a season and I can, you know, show you guys, like I can, you know, I can do this. You know, it's, it's, it can definitely be frustrating. So this is Elliot Fry. He is uh, one of the kickers on the Atlanta Falcons roster. And what we're talking about is how insanely difficult it is coming from an outsider, undrafted kicker and making your way into the NFL. And Young Way Koo, you bring him up. I think this is definitely a part of your journey that in 10, 15 years, you'll look back at it and say, wow, I watched him grow i watched him excel and there was pieces out of his playbook that you you took what kind of tools in his toolbox did you like notice that he used well or what kinds of things are you going to take from this experience from him kind of being your guide yeah i mean you know i think first of all i have never you know in in young ways i you know i don't want to speak for him but i think we're very similar in that um you know, both of us aren't extremely technical, you know, he's very, um, you know, we both talk about like, however you can be the best is how it's, it's right for you. You know, there's not, obviously there's not one way to kick a ball. And I think you watch him and he's very unique in how he kicks it. I think I'm probably pretty unique in how I kick it. Um, but one thing that I really noticed about him was, was on the mentality side. Um, you know, and, and guys are different all over the NFL, but something I've never seen too close up. I, I saw it, you know, a lot with Justin Tucker when I was, I was with them for a, a week in training camp. Or I mean, in, yeah, in training camp last year. But um, I've always been more of just a very relaxed, 
kicker. You know, when I go in the game, I'm very much just like, man, whatever, like just go hit your ball. Um, you know, and, and I'm just, I'm almost not even thinking about kicking. You know, I let all the, you know, kind of training and everything just take over. Um, young way is like a killer. You know, he, he, you know, his mentality going into every single kick is he's, he's very confident. He knows he's going to make it. Um, and I, and I, I saw him do that, you know, in practice and other things. And I, I really admired that. I think watching him um, and just his mentality and approach where um, I think I could learn from that. You know, I've been really successful in what I do It's you know, pressure wise, you know, I think I've had a really good um, career. I, you know, my entire career, I've missed one kick in the fourth quarter. Like and that's AAF college preseason, you know, one game, whatever. But, you know, watching that again, I've, I've always just been more of a relaxed kind of like nonchalant. You get out there, whatever happens, happens. Um, but I, I really noticed how locked in and how, um, much of just like, you know, lack of a better word, just a, a killer he is when he's out there kicking. Yeah. As watching, watching his face, facial expressions, he looks very calm. You're also yeah. a guy that looks extremely calm. And it was really fun to watch this clip of you when you were at Lambeau field. I'm always a very calm guy. Like that's how I am on the field. I'm not like a, I've just never been a guy who's like, I'm going to go kill this ball. I'm going to go drain this. I'm going to do this, do that. It's, I'm very much like relaxed. I'm just like, eh, another field goal. Just go hit the ball, hit it in the sweet spot. It'll go in kind of like that. And that's where I get my confidence is just like, um, almost like a screw it mentality, just like whatever. Um, but you know, going in for my first field goal is like a 23 yarder where, you know, it's one of those ones where, you know, you never want to take a kick for granted, but you know, hey, this is this is pretty. You know, you get to go in and you pretty much get a get a guaranteed make from from 23, which was, uh, you know, just a, a little chip shot. Uh, kind of wish I got a few more opportunities in the game, but you know, been working at this for a really long time, and to go out in a place like Lambo and get a field goal was was really cool. That's so interesting for you to say that your detached mindset, meaning that you're not attached to some. Hey, I'm going to go smash this ball super high, super far. Hey, I'm attached to, I hope other scouts are watching, or I hope I get some film and someone out there will see me, you know, kind of that white knuckle clenched fist approach. Instead you say, look, it's another kick. Here I go. I'm going to do my best. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, my mentality has always been, I've always gotten confidence from my past, you know, in, in the AAF or wherever, and, and that kind of builds you for me, it builds my confidence, like knowing like, man, just, just go out there and you hit the ball in the sweet spot and it's going to go in, you know, and that's where my confidence, more of that mentality where it's kind of just like, screw it, just go kick it. And it'll go in. If you do, you know, if you kind of let the unconscious take over, you know what I mean? Like where you, you know, when you're in a high pressure situation, you fall back on fundamentals. You know, I think that's pretty like standard within, you know, any, any app, you know, any sport, anything, right. You're going to fall back on your fundamentals, like what, you know, right. It's like, if you go out there in golf and you may be working on something on the range, what happens on the first tee, you go back to hitting the slice that you are comfortable with because you know, yeah, maybe it's not going to land in the fairway, but it's not going to go out of bounds. And so I think same thing with kicking is you've been doing something for so long and you know, you have that once, once all the pressure is there and you're in the moment, you fall back on what you are comfortable and what you know. So as long as those are all, you know, I, I get my confidence, I think, from, from that. Like, I know that everything's there. Like, I just got to go in and swing the leg and it's going to work. Do you kind of black out a little bit? I, I wouldn't say black out, but it's definitely like, a, you, know, I, you know, as you know, like when you're in a game, everything happens so fast. You know, it's just like, it just happens so quickly and you kind of like do it and then you're like, wow, okay, I guess, you know. I just, you know, I made it, I missed it, whatever. Like it's just, it's over, you know, it happens. You know, I don't know if you feel this, but if you ever go back and like watch games or whatever, you feel like, I feel 10 times like more nervous watching myself kick on like a replay or something. You're like, Oh my God, I can't believe, you know, there was two minutes left of the game. We were down two. like, if I would have missed that, God, like, I don't know what would have happened. And 
you know, you look at back at it and you get more nervous than when you're really, I, was at, I asked Matt Prater this, he's uh, one of your colleagues, right? Your professional colleagues in the NFL. And I asked him if there's any kicks that, that he remembered. And it was funny because uh, you, you've experienced kicking in, uh, in soldier field. But one of the kicks that he remembers was like a regular season game. It was a 50, two yarder from right middle and it was there was a lot of wind blowing from left to right and you know he just remembers how the ball went from left to right pretty hard and he hit it as best as he possibly could is there a kick that comes to mind or a scenario or a story that you have that that's fresh yeah i think so when i was with the bears um obviously you know you said you were following that that was a that was a very unique experience. Um, kind of even what I found out later when I would talk to other coaches and kickers from other teams is like, can't believe you guys kind of went through all that, you know, where we had, you know, I got signed and then we had 10 kickers in mini camp, you know, it was like a, it was literally like a kicking combine. And then you go from that to kind of a lot of, they put us through a lot of antics. They put us through a lot of kind of mind games, which, uh, the more I talk to other people, you know, they, they said, you know, maybe that's not the best approach, but, um, you know, obviously everything that happened the year before with that missed kick, that was still really fresh on the team. And, you know, we go into our first preseason game, um, we're in soldier field, you know, it's my first game, you, you know, it's obviously preseason, but it's, you know, that stadium was, you know, full, you're in the bears uniform. Like that's a, that's like a real game, at least in my, um, you know, my mind, like that was, you know, that was a real game. And, um, I remember going out there and first kind of field goal, you know, I had, I think I had an extra point before that, but, um, the other guy had missed one, you know, and it was like, you know, obviously anytime anybody misses at this level, there's just so few misses. Like that's, that's your time to capitalize. Like he misses, like you go in and make it, you're up, you know? Um, and we were going into the half. And I don't know if they set it up this way or something. I I don't know how it worked out, but we drove it to the 25 yard line, same field goal, 43 yarders in the 43 yarder into the North end zone, three seconds left. Um, We were playing the Panthers. They iced me just literally. I mean, it was literally like the, they made it the exact same kick as, as uh, the, the double doink from earlier uh, from the last year. And, man, I remember going in and I don't know, I, I was so calm and I was so just like, I, you know, if, I don't even know if there would be a video of me, but I remember just like, I was almost just smiling. Like I was just like, man, and it was kind of back to that mentality. That was maybe the best I've ever felt before a kick where I was just like, literally like in my mind, I was like, all I have to do is just like hit this in the middle of my foot. And like, I basically like, like I just make the most important kick of my life. And I went in and put it right down the middle, just, perfect ball. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was one of the the coolest kicks that I've, I've had at least at this, you know, kind of this stage of my career. And the stages of the career that you've had require those moments, right? You're an outsider Mm -hmm. who gets a phone call from your old ball coach from South Carolina. You get to, you know, the AAF. Now you get a chance to like work out with an NFL squad after you have a 14 to 14, you know, professional debut so to speak dude that moment was huge right yeah no I mean it was it was definitely the biggest too because you know I think you know for a kicker at least in my perspective like in my situation where you're not you come out of college like I I quit football like I wasn't doing it for you know like I wasn't that that was like behind me I had moved on and to get kind of back in it you know as, as confident as you are as a kicker and like you know, I'd watch games when I was like done kicking and I'm like, man, I could still do that. And as much as you say that, as much as you like believe it, there's still that like little voice in your head, like, well, like you're in a game now, like, can you do it? You know, there's always that thing in the back of your mind. Like, I know I can make the kick. I know I can kick at this level, but like, this is the game. Like, can, are you going to be able to go in and make this happen? And I think there's always that, you know, like belonging fact, like, do I, am I good enough to be in the NFL? Am I at this level? You know, we can all think it and we can all do it. And I know a lot of guys out there think, yeah, I can be in the NFL. Um, And there's just kind of that moment where it's like, all right, this is it. Like, can you be in the NFL or not? At least that's how it was kind of for me going in with that kick. Like I'm going in and after everybody's so focused on that kick the year before, I have the same kick. 
I mean, obviously the stakes are way different, but after all that, like 43 yarder, same end zone, Chicago, like ice me, you know, go in. If you can make that, like you can, like you belong here, you know, like you, all the kicks in preseason, like in training camp, like, yeah, those are all great. And those are all pressure filled, but like, can you do it in the preseason game? And then can you do it in a real game? And they all kind of build up. So no, it was, it was an un- unbelievable experience. And maybe that's the difference. Maybe you've helped identify the difference between the 50 kickers on the globe that can make it into the NFL. But of those 50, how many of them do you do really have that sense of belonging that you now have? Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, that's, that's what it is. You know, I think obviously if you ask anybody in the NFL, like what separates the guys who are in there and the guys who aren't is, is like the mentality, you know, can you go in and actually, you know, it's, it's so easy for kickers to, to get into this mindset of like, Oh, that guy missed a 38 yarder. Like I could have made that. And it's like, yeah, like no shit. Like everybody can make that. Like we can all make that kick, but are, can you make that? in a game when you've already kicked three over 40 and made all those, can you continually keep doing it? Um, I think it is, you know, there's obviously that difference. I think you see some guys this year, you know, I know there were a lot of opportunities this year and, you know, you, you see a lot of guys who got that opportunity and capitalized on it. Um, you see a lot of guys that didn't, you know, who kind of got in the situation and um, just weren't able to come through it. I don't necessarily think, you know, one bad game, you know, defines you means you can't do it I still go back to you know when young Wade was with the Chargers for his first three games like he didn't have a great you know start and now look at him you know it you know you can you can miss you know in your first game and still be really good but um yeah no it's just it's interesting there, there's definitely I, I think there is there are some of those guys who are talented enough but maybe don't have the the ability to actually capitalize in the moment and I think that, you know, is, is maybe what, you know, what kind of defines it. Hey, now you're a golf fan, aren't you? Do you play? You... Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big, big golfer. Okay. So do you remember in 2017 when Jordan Spieth was at the, uh, the, the British Master. Open, Royal Burkdale and he hits that oh, yeah. tee shot literally like 80 yards, like out of bounds and they have to move like, well, the reason why I want to bring up this story, and I've, I've brought it up on this podcast before with uh, Ty Long, who's the uh, punter for the L.A. Chargers, and it was Michael mm-hmm. Greller, who is Jordan's caddy, and as it seems like the world is crumbling behind him, and Matt Kuchar is you know, kind of making a charge for what would be an amazing story of, as, of a guy who's older than 40 to, to win his first major. Mm-hmm. And Greller tells Spieth and reminds him, and this is like, again, when the world is just crumbling. I mean, Jordan is not doing what he normally does. And yeah. he's, he reminds him of a, um, a trip that he went on where he played golf with Michael Phelps and Michael Jordan. And it was just like, you know, all-star group. And Greller tells to sell Spieth, you belong in that group. And mm-hmm. from that moment, Spieth got it together and brought out one of the best performances on that par three, number 17, I think it was, where he hits the ball like three feet from the pin and finishes yeah. birdie birdie and wins the, you know, the British Open. Yeah. And few people in the world ever really get that experience that says, look, I belong, I'm good enough, and I I can hear in your voice and I can see it in your face that you have that same, that same sense of membership in the club. Yeah. Well, I, and it's interesting too, you know, it's still one of those things where there, there's this really fine line of like, you know, I look at it and I'm like, man, I played my first game this year. I, st- I you know, I missed an extra point that game, which I'm still, you know, pissed about. And so there's still that like, man, like I've still got to prove myself. Like I still need to go in and I don't want to just play one game in a year. You know, I want to be the guy on a team, you know? And so there's still that, you know, thing where like, you're still fighting that, like, I, you know, I'm good enough to be one of the 32. That's like what I believe, but you know, I've still got more to prove. It's not just like, Hey, I went in one game, I made a field goal. Um, you know, that's it. Like, yeah, now I'm good enough. It's like, you know, I want to be and and, you know, everybody who's a competitor is, you know, the same way. It's like, that's not good enough. You know, like I'm, I'm still got more to like, I, I haven't made it yet. You know, it's like, of course, like if, if you were to ask me a year ago, like I remember a year ago, man, I'm going to all the workouts and I'm like, man, if I could just get in one game, 
you know, and it's, it's like now this year I literally got in one game, you know, and a year ago that would have been like whatever, but you just keep moving on. And now it's like, you know, two games, three games, the whole season, you know, be a, a guy who signs a, a big deal after three years, you know, it's just that it always builds. So it's, um, it, it's just crazy. Cause like, I, of course, yeah, now I played in one game, but you know, that's not, that's not enough. You know, it's like, you want to go and you want to keep going. You still, I think there's always that chip on the shoulder of, of guys, um, not just in kicking, but athletes all over. You still have like the chip on your shoulder, you know, it's like still like, yeah, I, I played in one game, but like, there's still so much more. And it's like, you know, you, you'd probably talk with young way or any other guy, like he played a year, he had a pro bowl. Well, he wants all pro. Well, he wants to get the big deal. He wants to be, you know, an all decade kicker. You know, he wants, you know, it's there. Those goals are always kind of, um, you're, you're always shooting higher. So it's, Again, like I, I look back on it, I'm like, that was an amazing experience. It was great to play in Lambo, get your first one, but you know, I'm not done yet. I still got to go and I still have more to do. This is Elliot Fry. He's uh, one of the current kickers on the Atlanta Falcons. And as we kind of wrap this thing up here, what, what is it that you need in order to get to that next level of your progression to be the guy? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. You know, I think you, again, you've got to be in a position, you know, where, um, you can be the guy, you know, obviously, you know, I look at this year with coming up with the Falcons and, you know, young ways, a, a great kicker. Um, I'm, you know, I, I'm probably not going to have a future in Atlanta. You know, I, I'd love to, that would be great. I'm going to go in and compete as the best I can. Um, but I know how this league works and, and, and how it should, you know, it's like, you know, young is one of the best kickers in the league. You know, it's like, same thing if you get, when you go in and you sign with uh, Baltimore and they have a lot of guys cycle through there, right? Like, you know, you're not going to take Justin Tucker's job, but it's still a great chance to, to learn, to develop, to keep going and um, get preseason reps, stuff like that. So, um, man, I mean, I did just kind of one of those things. I think I'm, I'm ready for it. You know, it's just kind of, you got to wait for the situation to open up and, you know, whenever that does, um, you know, you got to capitalize on it. You know, you can't, go out, you know, I, like I said, I'm still frustrated with myself. You know, I missed an extra point. I wish I would have gone perfect that game. And, um, but you know, next one, you know, you got to have, you know, I got to go have a better game next time when I get that opportunity. So, you know, I think it's just timing, keep working really hard, keep working on, you know, whatever you can and just be prepared for the next opportunity. And we were talking about working hard and like how small this margin is, you know, I've tracked all the kicks in the NFL this season and we just saw, um, young ways, you know, first, you know, eight, eight games or so, are you doing any kind of tracking of your own kicks or using kind of tech, any kind of technology maybe that you've, you know, picked up along the way, or if not, what kind of tools are, you know, really have been helpful for you in your progression? Yeah, no, I, I actually, I literally like two weeks, well, probably like a month ago, downloaded, you know, the, the simple kicking app. And I was going to start tracking everything on that kind of once I got to a point, you know, like right now, you know, you're kind of resting, kind of taking a few weeks off. But once I get back, I, you know, I do think that's, you know, I, I've obviously looked at it and think that's a great idea for me to kind of track your off season and kind of like, you know, cause obviously, you know, one thing I don't think a lot of people realize is like when you're in the NFL, if you're going in to compete at any time, you have, to, you're always performing. There's never a time to work on stuff when you are in an NFL building, no matter what anybody tells you, they can say, yeah, go, you know, go work on your stuff. Be fine. We don't care if you miss in practice. That is not true. Everybody's watching. If you go and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to try something new today. And I go four for 10 out on field goal period and the front office sees that I'm probably gone the next day. Like there's no, there's no working. So this time where you have this three or four months before you get into the building where you could really experiment and kind of like, Hey, this is what I need to do. Let's try to find a way to be able to do that. I can work on stuff. And I think to be able to kind of track some of that, which I really haven't done, you know, I've always just kind of been a guy who goes out, try to hit an A ball every time and just, you know, just keep going. But, you know, I'm definitely going to start, you know, having that tracking ability, seeing like, Hey, I did this this day. How did, how did I, if I hit a set of 12 and track it, like how good am I actually hitting those with that way of doing things? So I think that's a, um, 
you know, a really good thing for me. That's kind of what, you know, one of the things I'm definitely working on this off season is um, I've always hit, I've always like thought of myself as a very good ball striker. Like I've always felt like I've hit the high straight ball um, that coaches have always, you know, wanted. And the more I've gotten into the NFL um, and been around people is yes, like height is important and stuff, but it's not as important as I thought it was. Right. Like when you're coming out of high school, like every coach is like, you, you know, and that's where I got like a lot of my, like, they were like, you hit a really high ball. You must be good. And, um, a lot of those stadiums you're playing in really bad wind, you know, and, and I sometimes got, you know, okay with, you know, hitting the kind of the high flutter ball that it's, it's a good ball, but it's just too high. And so I've, I've got to work on kind of almost having more tools in my bag to where I'm hitting more of a, a driver and not, you know, not hitting like a low, but just hit, hitting more of a direct ball instead of me. I've just always tried to kick it as high as I can, just because that's what got you noticed my, your whole life. You know, like you see someone hit a really high ball and as a kicker, you're like, Ooh, good ball, you know, and that's kind of always what it's been. And, you know, you, you have to be more functional than that in the NFL, especially when you get into places like Soldier Field or Green Bay. Um, you know, you get places like that where I, I look at my um, miss up there, and that was probably one of the reasons is, you know, one of those perfect storms. You know, it was windy, it was cold, there was a gust right when I kicked it. But if I hit that A, a ball that's a driver, you know, it's going to go in. But you hit it just that kind of like where, you know, you're like, yeah, that should have gone in. But with that wind and stuff, that can get blown out like pretty quickly. Like if you're in an indoor, you, you pro I probably make that. If everything's perfect, I probably make that. But at the end of the day, I've got to be the one. If I hit that A ball, knowing that nothing's going to touch it no matter what. So that's definitely something I'm working on in the off season. Yeah. It sounds like being able to learn more about yourself, especially your tendencies that, Hey, when I have a certain ball flight, I have now experience that says that ball is going to get pushed. I mean, look what Justin Tucker yeah. did on Sunday night. Uh, yeah, that was Saturday wild. Sunday night in Buffalo. <laughs> I mean, he hit, you know, I think one of the two balls was uh, a B ball. The other one was an A ball. But, I mean, he hit the upright. And I got a text from one of my friends saying, is Justin Tucker washed up? And I, I said, no, no, he's human. <laughs> he's human. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's like for you, what you're saying is like on your road of progression of your, on your road to, you know, get on top of that razor thin margin that separates you from being on the outside versus being one of the 32 is being able to identify those tendencies that you have in, in your kicking. Yeah, definitely. Well, and that's, and that's something that I think that makes, you know, I think if you ask any kicker in the NFL, if they're being completely honest, I, I mean, Justin Tucker is, is, you know, cause kicking, you, you can look at, you know, who makes the most percentage wise, obviously he's like the most accurate, but more than that, his, his ability is so much greater than everybody else where he hits these. And I, and I watched him and, you know, when I was there for a week, he hits the same ball every time and his a ball does not move in the wind, which is why last week was so um, interesting to watch. I mean, he like, he hits an A ball that doesn't get moved by the wind at all. Like his wind, I mean, his, his ball is so direct. Um, and that's, again, that's one thing I, I want to work on is, is that exactly. But, um, yeah, so yeah. What, I'm, what I'm pulling up here is we had previously talked about young way who is, you know, just lights out his precision was 4.8 degrees. Look, this is really mm -hmm. simple math. I mean, this is not supposed to be like difficult things that, you know, kickers and punters and decision makers can't quickly understand, but 3.3 mm -hmm. degrees of precision is a tighter grouping than 4.8 <laughs> and 3.3 is Justin Tucker's number. Dude, yeah, that is stupid. insane. And through eight games, the only miss he had was a 61 yarder. Now, in a couple of weeks, I'll come out with, you know, the, the full results. But if you look at this mm -hmm. is the top of the top and all the standard is now based off of this. Right. You can tell. I think he's just there are just not a lot of guys can do what he does in terms of just, you know, like I said, like he just hits with something that's really hard to do, you know. The NFL for most guys is a game of misses, right? How good is your miss hit? Justin Tucker doesn't have miss hit. Like I've watched him go through like a week and like I didn't see a miss hit a ball. Like 
Like it just doesn't have, like, and even in the games, you know, you can even, you know, he's obviously missed a few of this, you know, postseason everything, but like, he doesn't hit bad balls. It's almost like if he misses, it's like truly unlucky in, in a sense. Like, you know, he's, he's not perfect, obviously, but he, he just, he hits such a good ball. It's, it's crazy to see. And you can see sometimes where you know that it's really windy and you know what the wind's doing and you watch another guy and it moves their ball that much. And his doesn't move in the wind almost. You know, it's just, it's like nothing can, can touch it. So, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, looking at these numbers, you know, he's, <laughs> He's, he's right down the middle every, every time. What tools in his toolbox is he using? But what makes him so consistent? Yeah, I think one of the things, and I, I, don't, I don't know if anybody will ever know that, because if I ever knew that, then I'd be, then I'd be just as consistent because I'd be doing that in the offseason. But um, I, I do think he's probably the most natural ball striker maybe ever. Like I just, when he hits the ball, when he kicks it, it's in the middle. It's, it's a sweet spot every time he does not miss hit a ball, but I, I thought something that was really cool with him and he's built up to be able to do this. You know, I was talking about this earlier where um, you can't try new things at the facility, right? Because, because when you start missing, people start asking questions and they lose confidence. Even if it is practice, they can say whatever they want, but like, there's stuff going on subconsciously in whoever's mind, whether it's the front office, whether it's the coaches, they want to see you go 10 for 10 every day. That makes them feel comfortable. That makes them go to bed at night and have a, you know, a sound, sound night's sleep. But um, I thought it was really cool that he's built up to be so untouchable that he goes out and practice. And, and I can tell just from talking with him from his off season, he's constantly trying new stuff. Like he is, he is constantly working on new ways to kick and he's trying things out, trying them in practice, part of which he can do because he's untouchable, you know, like he could go out and go over 20 in a week and he is still going to have his same job security. Um, but you know, he's built up to that point, obviously, but, but he's, he's not afraid to, to go and try new things and, and try to get, um, better, which I think is, you know, obviously every kicker is trying to get better. Um, but at the same time, you have that, you know, you, you have that thought like this worked last year. I can't get too far away from it. He, he's fine with throwing the whole thing out and trying other stuff. He also has the best snapper and holder um, operation ever. Like Morgan Cox and Sam Cook, I, when I took the first snap in practice from them, I thought that I was operating – in like one, four, five, because, you know, and you can go watch it. I, I have videos on my phone that I show other guys in the league because most guys, like you want to get that ball set right on that last step so that you have like a full step to kick the ball for them. It is, they like to do that a step before. So Justin sees the ball for like a whole step longer that like they, they're so quick. They have, um, if you, if you really watch them, Morgan snaps it over the spot and Sam's hands are just kind of just put it down. There's no movement. There's no catch it and then set it. He's just snapping it to the spot and Sam has just great hands and he can almost just kind of flip it down. Um, but I think that's, that's an unbelievable resource too. Like when I went back and looked at my off times that day, I was like, Oh, that was completely normal. But I felt like I was so slow because I was just looking at the ball so and is that something that they have? And I'm I'm sorry if I'm keeping you too long, but we're getting in, we're kind of nerding yeah. out here, and this is kind of fun. We're getting yeah. we're we're getting some we're, we're mining some some kicking gold over here. Where is this coming from? Is this what R Randy Brown is really intricately involved in? Like, yeah, well, I, I think they have a really cool. You know, obviously the the, the Ravens are known for their special teams. I, I've you know Harbaugh is a huge special teams guy. There's a lot of um, emphasis on special teams, you know, and you have a guy like Brandy Brown, who's, you know, you know, one of the best coaches, you know, in the NFL for, for kickers, you know, he, they put a lot of time and effort into it. You know, I think it, it's no secret at any level of the NFL special teams is pushed to the, to the back, right? Like, you know, it's, it's never at the forefront and it really feels like there um, it's one of the, it's, 
it is truly offense, defense, and special teams. Like it's a third of the game. And I don't, I've never really felt like it's truly like that anywhere else. Um, but they just, I, I think again, Sam Cook has some of the best hands as a holder ever. And Morgan Cox is one of the best snappers ever. So I think they've got those three people, all three really good veterans in place who have been together for a really long time. Um, who are all, you know, they've, they've been together for, I, I don't know how many years, but when you get that kind of, um, you know, just work together, you know, you have that going on like eight or however many years where you, everything's the same. It's, I think it's just like a recipe for success. They don't have any turnover. Look Now look at your story. Like you've been around the best of the best. Like, like you said, arguably Morgan Cox, Sam Cook, Justin Tucker, the best special team field goal unit ever assembled. You've got Easily. that. Yeah. You have kicked in difficult conditions, Green Bay. You have kicked in the most difficult team or organized team activities probably ever in the NFL with the mind games, with the Augusta silence that you went through, <laughs> with the you know, 80 guys that you competed with in, in, in combines. I mean, you have played in a bankrupt league that you went 14 of 14. Your journey is remarkable. Like what you have already overcome reminds me of like Lord of the Rings type stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> you are the, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it really has it's been crazy. You know, it's been a really, been a really long journey obviously it's been uh i wish it was sped up you know I, I wish it was it was quicker where like you go from the af and then play but i i, I think about this it sometimes it's just like it, it is like the like it's literally just the smallest step by the smallest step like each year like i go from nothing to the af and then i go to chicago and i i do make it to a training camp and play in one preseason game and that's or two pre three preseason games overall, but like, that's it. And then you sign a futures contract. It's like, Hey, I signed a futures contract. And now this year I get one, literally one game in like, it's <laughs> like, just like the little, the, the minimal amount of the next step is what I like. Like next year, am I going to get exactly two games in? Like it, you know, it's just like, <laughs> I wish, I obviously wish it, it was happening faster, but um, no, it's been, it's been a cool experience. I've got to be around a lot of, like you said, a lot of great kickers, a lot of great um, special teams guys. Just um, it, it's been really cool, and I've I've learned a lot from from a lot of guys and um, a lot of different teams. Well, Elliot, this has been a, a total treat. I mean, the only guy I know that's been around more NFL squads than you is Shane Graham. I mean, after the Carolina Panthers, <laughs> Tampa Bay Bucks, Chicago Bears, Baltimore Ravens, Atlanta Falcons. I mean, I'm probably missing a couple of teams that you've already, you know, you know, been around, but your journey is incredible. And I am so pumped to continue to watch it, to foster whatever I can to help you get to wherever you need to be. And, you know, fans of simple kicking will definitely know about you and your journey will inspire them to not give up and to be okay with the little small incre incremental, you know, progress that they find along their, their kicking and, and punting journeys. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's been fun to been on. It's, it's, it's always fun to kind of, you know, there's not a lot of people who you can talk to about kicking, you know, just there's, there's not a lot of guys. There's again, there's 32 guys in the NFL right now who are NFL kickers. There's not a lot of people in the world who um, are kind of in this community. So it's always cool to, you know, talk to guys, pick their brains and, you know, share, uh, you know, whatever you've learned and, and share different things. So I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. And like Thomas Morstead says, whatever you give will make you grow. So I hope this was uh, something where, where you experienced a little bit of growth. I certainly know I, I have, and, and I definitely know that the, the listeners, uh, although there may only be a few of them, you know, we're talking about little increments. I mean, who knows how many people will actually listen to this, but you know what? The fact is that you have given, it might help just one guy. And I think that goodness, you know, comes back, you know, tenfold. So I, yeah, I definitely. equally feel as grateful to have you on and whatever I can do for you in your career, I am a uh, DM or a text or a phone call away, man. <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate it, man. You're welcome. Well, that's Elliot Fry, everybody. If you enjoyed the content, man, drop a like, comment, or even subscribe. It would be really cool to hear from you. Also, you can find Simple Kicking on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, 
and even TikTok.